Alrighty guys, it is currently 7.30 in the morning and I am leaving Lee Creek. Um, it's been a good trip, but um, I've always, uh, always haven't looked forward to this part of the trek for me. Um, this is the part where I have to drive solo. Uh, 2,150 kilometers back to the Gold Coast. Um, this is the part, obviously, where uh, I've already separated with uh, Tyra and Eric and the other boys back up in Uluru. And then this is the day that I separate with um, Dad and Nicole, where they'll continue down south to Melbourne. And then, obviously, me just driving solo back to the Gold Coast. That was a bit of mud coming off my uh, vehicle from yesterday. Anyway, so I'm going to try and quickly find a server that may be or may not be open to um, pump up my tyres because they're still at dirt pressures. Um, uh, looks like I've found one here, but I don't know if it'll be open. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, pump up my tyres. Get them back up to pressure. Nothing beats the sound of a uh, onboard air compressor in the morning. So we um, pulled up to the Lee Creek Motor Inn and stitch up. The guy A hasn't got a air fitting on his hose out here, and B, and it's not open. Luckily, I've got onboard air. Um, does the job. It's not as quick as airing up at a gas station because they got much, much, much bigger compressors, but <coughs> this little one out the back does the job. So, I've almost been driving on the Outback Highway. It's funny that it's called, they're calling it the Outback. Because, I mean, I am in the Outback. Uh, so, yeah, we've been driving on this road for probably almost about two hours. Maybe like an hour and 45. <coughs> um, and I just passed my first vehicle travelling the opposite way. So, that just gives you, gives you an idea of how remote um, I am at the moment. I mean, I wouldn't even call this remote at the moment. I'm on a bitumen highway um, heading down to Port Augusta. Um, I, I mean, to an average sort of person, this would be remote, but this is not remote. The remote is out in the middle of the Simpson Desert. No reception. Uh, it would take days for a rescue party to come get you for whatever reason, whether it's a vehicle breakdown or uh, a medical evac. Um, that, that's that's remote. Um, the other thing with um, these outback highways or outback roads is um, when you get this far out, um, farmers don't actually fence off uh, along the road. Um, you um, come across a lot of uh, cattle grids, which are like um, like a metal rate grill on the road where livestock can't put their um, their feet on. Um, I mean, if they get smart enough, they can sort of like tiptoe along the way. Um, you'll, I'm actually about to cross a grid now, so you'll be able to hear it. So, um, they're sort of like the fences of their paddocks. Now, I mean, I can see on this particular stretch of road, I've got a fence on this side and a fence on this side, but literally about 600 meters back, um, I could see some sheep crossing the road, probably at about almost a kilometer away. Um, and then before that, <laughs> I had um, three emus cross the road. And I thought, oh, I usually they only travel at, you know, two or twos or threes. But then this other one decided to jump out in the last minute, and I was, I, I had a thought in my head that I'm going to have another, another episode of a um, animal strike inside of my vehicle because um, once before when I've been travelling out west, I had a roo hit the side of my driver's side door, and there's a nice little dent in there at the moment, and I have. 
think or has he hit another route on the bull bar? Um, that's why I've got the bull bar. But yeah, I thought I was going to have another case of a, uh, an animal struck in the side of my vehicle. So, um, that there goes a bit more dirt. But um, yeah, out here, farmers don't tend to um, fence off the road. The animals just ride um, or roam freely as they wish. litres, if I've got 10 litres 
at 9.6 litres a kilometre, I've roughly got about 100k um, when the fuel light comes on. And my fuel light is on at the moment, and I, wanted, I, I, I knew this was going to happen. Um, so last night when I pulled into um, Berg, I had, I think, 837 k's on the odometer on this tank. Um, and then I jumped on Hema Maps and worked out how many k's it was to um, Wal Walgott, which was about 200 or 270 odd k. So I knew I could uh, get to that destination um, and then fill up there. So it's probably a little hot tip for any of you guys that, or girls that want to do a road trip is to A, work out what your fuel tank capacity is, whether it's a standard one or an extended one. Um, yeah, so work out how many, how many liters is in it, fill it all the way up, go to your fuel light comes on, and then, um, then fill up, work out how many liters you got left as soon as the light comes on, and then work out roughly how many k's you've got. Um, now obviously this is not an ideal scenario where you want to be uh, running your vehicle when the fuel light is on, but it's always um, always good to know in the back of your head roughly how many k's you've got um, in your tank when it does hit that light, just in case for whatever reason. Um, especially if you're, say for example, like with me, with this trip that I've done, if you're out in the middle of whoop whoop, <coughs> and fuel is say four or five hundred kilometers away in some cases it's almost 600 um, it's good to know <coughs> roughly what your uh, fuel burns like alrighty team so I made it to where am I uh, Walget Wal Walget in New South Wales somewhere in there anyway so I filled up and I put in a hundred and thirty five point seven nine liters so that was right to like the brim so technically I still had roughly 15 liters of fuel um, left in my tank even after driving for almost I think about 50 to 60 K when the fuel light came on so with those numbers I could roughly like I said, probably get about a hundred, maybe another 150k, I reckon. 150k would be pushing it, like, to the absolute extreme. Um, not that I like to push that that often, but, um, it's always, like I said, it's always good to know, as soon as your fuel light comes on, roughly how many k's you've got left in the tank. Um, like I said, just in case if you're out in the middle of whoop whoop, like I am, um, and just so you're aware, I think that's the biggest thing, and know your vehicle as well. I think that's the biggest thing some blokes do is they're not, um, they haven't tested things and haven't done the math and worked out, you know, numbers, fuel ratio, or well, not fuel ratio, fuel economy, um, blah blah blah. So it's always handy to know. That's tips with Stevie G. Alrighty guys, I apologise about the lighting because I'm in my truck, but I'm finally home after a uh, 6,780 kilometre, I love it how it's even, 9 hours and 59 minutes, it was almost 91 hours spent driving, um, it's been an absolute awesome trip. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else much to say other than what I've said in all the days that I've uh, been vlogging. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully this is the first of uh, many adventures and um, many vlogs, vlogs um, as such. So, um, yeah, if you, guys would, if you guys would like to see more, please let me know.
Peace.